Um, however, all beliefs don't have to be dogmatics, right? Um, if I believe that there are aliens and someone asks why do you believe that they're aliens and they make assessments and they refer to things and they, they identify sources and they make this sort of formalized argument, what's being made is what's known as an appeal to authority. Right? You, make, you can make an appeal to authority. So I'm making an appeal to um, something outside of myself, something outside of my own justification. So an attempt to um, justify why I have a particular belief, I can either be dogmatic and make a self-referential uh, justification, or I can, be, um, I, or I can make uh, an appeal to authority and make an appeal to a system or a standard of or a series of justifications outside of my own system, outside of myself, right? So that you can see that belief has more reality, more substance, right, than conjecture. Why? Because conjecture doesn't even refer to anything. I, I just say what someone else said. I'm nothing more than a parrot. At least with belief, I have an attempt. Um, it could be fallacious and usually is fallacious. I at least make the attempt to argue uh, and justify my beliefs. I believe this because of X. I don't believe that because of X. Just like we made a transition um, on Plato's ontological half, we're also going to make a transition on his epistemological half, right? Just like it was separated sort of in columns and in rows, this distinction also marks a distinction epistemologically. So this would be ontological distinction And this is going to be our epistemology. Ep so, um, the bottom half, obviously, are things that we feel, right? They, these are sort of governed by aesthetic truths, right? These are sort of governed by aesthetic truths. Well, things that we feel, things that matters of interpretation, matters of taste, how would we translate? What, what do you think the word might be for the translation of that concept into our acquisition of knowledge. Well, it would be opinion, right? This would be opinion. So that three and four are perceived reality and they are governed by opinion. So that this bottom half is a perception of reality and it's governed by opinion. The perception of reality is our ontological claim. The opinion is our epistemological claim. The combination of the ontological and the epistemological give us an understanding a full understanding of embodiment, right? For Plato, our embodiment is classified in terms of the opinions that we formulate and the actual embodiment of, of human beings, right? The phenomenological, the existential experiences that we have as human beings. However, according to him, this is the least real um, form of reality and we need to transcend into a higher order, right? On his ontological level, we transition the concepts and forms. On his epistemological level, the first thing that we do is we recognize that with respect to our beliefs and conjecture, beliefs and conjectures make reference to, right? I refer to the, if I'm, a, if I'm basing it on conjecture, then I just simply refer to whoever said it, right? But I'm making a reference to something. If I am attempting to justify my belief, then I make either a reference to myself or I make reference to some other system. Well, this reference to, this sort of justificatory, it's a hard word to say, justificatory body is a structure of understanding. I understand how to formalize argument or I understand how to formalize a justification or I understand how to formalize and justify my beliefs. That is more real than being able to articulate any belief, right? If I have an understanding of how to structure argument, how to structure um, reason as such, then that can be used to justify the beliefs of basically everything, hence sophistry, right? So that a higher level of this is what's known as understanding. So that understanding is the transition into the transcendent, right? Understanding has more substance, substantial reality uh, um, has less, sorry, understanding has less substantial reality than belief, but it has more reality, 
right? It, it's, it's not embodied in things, right? It's not the belief of X, this particular thing. It is the nature wherein we apply these sort of axioms to any um, particular instance of belief, right? And really, really and truly, this is axiomatic, right? It's the understanding of the nature of some argument. For example, in one of, um, I, I put the video up a long time ago on uh, um, sort of larger logical argumentation, hypothetical syllogism, if A then B, if B then C, therefore if A then C, that can be applied. If you understand that, right, it's better to have an understanding of that than to have the belief that if it's raining outside, uh, I won't get wet based on the construction of the, the argument that I showed you before. Um, if it's raining outside, I'll bring an umbrella. If I bring an umbrella, I won't get wet. Therefore, if it's raining outside, I won't get wet. I don't need to instantiate any any particular aspect of a hypothetical syllogism to have an understanding of it. I just need to understand it in its abstraction, right? So that an understanding will always be a more profound level of knowledge than the belief in anything. You can believe in whatever you want to believe in. Having an understanding in how things are justified, according to Plato, has more reality than trying to discuss any particular belief and, and definitely no conjecture.